Men fokus er det ingen. Skal vi remove? Nå skal vi. everyone and welcome to our service. If I could just remind everyone to mute themselves before we begin. Can't be lovely. And we begin with our first hymn, Spread, O Spread, Thou Mighty Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the first lesson is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, starting at verse, verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the Oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favour with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them and stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born, born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought me laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The second lesson is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 9 beginning at the 35th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went out about all the cities and the villages, 
teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As well as we heard from Genesis, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, I have born Abraham a son in his and my old age. Well, last week I received a letter from London. The paper and the envelope were of such good quality and both were embedded with the seal and the crest of the Church of England. Well, with the Archdeacon and the Bishop of Berwick leaving Newcastle Diocese soon, I wondered if it could be a letter letting me know that my name had been put forward as a possible replacement and if I was prepared to accept or be considered. So in my excitement and anticipation, I opened the letter and read, Soon you will be coming up to retirement and I would like to invite you to start preparing for it. And this was followed up by an email from the diocese saying, I'd been booked into a webinar for you to discuss housing and finance for when you retire. It did make me think, am I past it? Or are they hinting that it's time I should be put out to grass? Seriously though, isn't it interesting when we get to a certain age, society can make you feel unwanted. How many times have we heard people say, if you get to 55 and you're unemployed, you've had it, nobody will want you. And just think of the pandemic, how it's highlighted the real issues that face our social services and the care of the elderly. The church, when it comes to the training of candidates for ordination, it offers to diocese less financial support the older you are, which could mean that if you're a certain age, you may not have the chance or the opportunity to go to full-time theological college. And the last five years focus on mission within the church and the new resource churches has been focusing time, energy and resources much more upon the young. And it's times like these that I like to reflect upon our Old Testament lesson that we've just had this morning, especially those words that I began with. Abraham 
was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, everyone will laugh with joy with me, for I have borne him a son in his old age. This always reminds me when I was 18 years old and an apprentice in engineering. We just done our first year in the apprentice, in the apprentice school and we were about to be let loose on the shop floor. And I wanted to specialise in mechanical engineering fitting. But now it was just the question, who would be my training instructor? And I can remember it like yesterday, but it was a bit like Harry Potter, choosing which house he wanted to be in, constantly repeating in his mind, please let it be Gryffindor, please let it be Gryffindor. Or in my case, please God, let it be Gordon or Fred. Let it be Gordon or Fred. And the reason why I wanted them was because they had years of experience and understanding. They were highly skilled. And despite being the oldest instructors in the company, they had such a freshness and an enthusiasm about their work that I knew that they were just right for me. And I know that I became what I am due to them. When you look at our Old Testament lesson this morning, one thing that you cannot miss is the enthusiasm and the understanding of Abraham and just how keen he was to offer hospitality. Those words, the Lord appeared to Abraham. He looked up and saw the three of them near and he ran to meet them. He bowed down. He hastened to Sarah and said, make ready. He ran to the herd, took the calf, tender and good, and he set it all before them, and they ate. Well, that's not bad for a hundred-year-old man. His wisdom, his insight, his enthusiasm, and years of understanding and experience were the foundation of the establishment of the Jewish nation and the Jewish faith. Abraham and Sarah bought Isaac. Isaac married Rebekah, who bought Esau and Jacob. And from Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel, from which came the covenant of God's people. And thus Abraham is known as the father of all. Yes, when we get older, we might slow down a bit, but our experience and our understanding mean we are able to make up by reading the situation, the game much more, and by putting ourselves in the right position. So that rather than our age and slowness becoming an handicap, it becomes a great benefit. Just think, Abraham, by positioning himself by the oaks of Mamre, he put himself at the center of the main trading route. Everybody had to pass by him. He was perfectly positioned to see and to respond to whoever or whatever came his way. One of the main reasons I wanted to do my training at the College of the Resurrection Murfield was because I not only wanted to go a place that had such a good academic theological reputation, but the main reason is, is because I wanted this to be built upon the sure foundation of prayer, of worship, and of community living, and hoping that this would give me a good understanding of God, my faith, my calling, and God's people. One thing I always remember and was so impressed when I went for an interview at the College of the Resurrection, and it's something which I never experienced at the other colleges I visited, and I went to a few. And it was how well they did their homework on me. The insights they had were amazing. It was as if they knew me really well. They knew my strengths, my weaknesses, my potential. 
And I'm also sure they knew the challenges that I would bring being with them. So what I learned early on was our religious order had such insight to the world, to people and their lives, and how well they could relate to this. And this, of course, comes with age, with understanding and years of reflection. It marked them and the community out as being special. One of the things I find really significant about our gospel this morning is how Jesus places all that he was and all that he does into the hands of his 12 disciples. That is, those who had been with him in community and prayerful living for three years. And so this meant that the crowd that flocked to Jesus could also flock to them. And so we hear how they are commissioned to proclaim the good news, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, and to cast out the demons. It was this which led the people to become the church and enabled early Christians to say with such pride and joy, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, because it was their enthusiasm, their experience, their understanding and life of prayer and worship which led them to Christ. An experience which both St. Paul in his letter to the Romans and St. Matthew in his gospel this morning puts at. God's unbelievable love which stretches to all and enables the reality of God's promises to be filled with, within them. So that filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, they can not only grow in faith, but can also experience, like Abraham, God's presence and gift of healing, and most important of all, the gift of new life. So what I'm trying to say rather badly is that as a church which urgently wishes to reach out and engage with the young, we need to remember that it is often the enthusiasm and the zest for life of older people which attracts the young. The power of life dedicated to experience, to wisdom, to understanding. Lives dedicated to community, to prayer, to worship, to a common life shared together. A church filled with such freshness and enthusiasm that it can reach out to our community so that those who experience us can say those words. I want to belong to Berwick Parish Church. I want to belong to Christ. And as that lovely nun put it when asked by the press, if a covenant should close because of falling numbers, she smiled at them, winked and said, Kui, we're still here. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, we pray for the church throughout the world. For this, our diocese for Christine, our Bishop, and for Mark, Bishop of Berwick, as he prepares to move to Chester. We pray for our Archdeacons, and for Peter as he prepares to move to Derby. We pray for all parishes in this, our diocese, and for the community we serve here in Berwick. Help us to stay true to our faith, and to share the gospel with those who have not yet heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, and all those who are charged with the responsibility and care of your world. We pray for all world leaders, and especially for our Prime Minister and our government. Give them grace and wisdom to serve the people of the world, to work towards a future of hope and peace. We pray for our local leaders, for our mayor, our sheriff and our town council, as they serve the people in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are victims of war, poverty, crime and natural disaster. For all those who feel rejected by society, for those who are lonely. For those who are searching for loved ones, all refugees and asylum seekers, and for those who suffer at the hands of their brothers or sisters. Send them your grace and comfort, that they may be able to restore their lives after all they have suffered. And we pray for all those who give aid and support around the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. For those who are in hospital, for those who are recovering from illness, for those who are preparing for operations, for those affected by coronavirus and those facing difficult times. We pray that they may find refuge in your love. We pray especially for those known to ourselves, for Alex Smith, Robert Smith, Isabel Hall, Val Carhill, Andrew McFarlane, Steve Loden, and Richard Shepherd. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and strengthen them at this time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the souls of those who have served in this life in your name and are now in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for all whom we have loved and known but seen no longer, for all those who have died recently and those whose years mind occurs at this time. We pray for those who grieve for them and ask that you surround them with your love and give us the grace to support and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, our friends and our neighbours. And we pray especially for Doreen Thompson, 
as she celebrates her 90th birthday tomorrow. Lord, give us grace to follow that great commandment, to love one another as you have loved us. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these prayers. prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, from sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We now have our second hymn, He Who Would Be Valiant Be. peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Keep safe, keep well. Yes, and you too as well. Thank you. Thank you.